What's up everyone, it's Q from Retro Q Gaming, and this morning I stumbled across something that I have no idea how it happened, so for some reason I managed to unsubscribe to Pat the Nezpunk without realising it. Uh, I was wondering why I hadn't seen any videos from his channel in like 3 months, and then I noticed this morning that he wasn't in my subscription list anymore. So I went back and I, I resubscribed and I watched a bunch of videos because he's had tons of videos out in the in the last couple of months that I, I had missed and there was one video that he made about a month ago I'll have a link to the description or uh, a link to the video in the description below but it's one thing that never actually occurred to me that could possibly exist it's a video uh, from his podcast with with Ian where they actually discuss what are what what they call shelf collectors and these shelf collectors are people who literally just buy games to have them sit on a shelf. Now, I know from personal experience, I mean, I, I have over 500 games uh, across more generations than I can count. But the main thing is I bought, at, I'd say, about 95% of those games to actually play now yeah okay of course since then they do sit on the shelf but i do tend to go back and play them over well i say over and over but i do tend to go back and play them eventually um, almost every game i have i've i've played at least two to three times at least in my my older stuff when i buy say retro games and stuff like that I, i'll have played them at least two to three times over different periods of times so I never actually realized that they, they discuss it in the in the video, uh, but there's actually people out there who might not even be gamers or might not even be that much into gaming, but literally just buy them to have like a collection on a shelf. That blows my mind. That never occurred to me that that, that something like that could actually happen. Do people actually do that? Is 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 this real? Is is this like uh, it's it's not just anecdotal evidence of like maybe a small group of a couple of dozen people a couple of dozen random people over 10 years on ebay or a store or anything i'm not saying they're wrong or they're right or anything it's just it's something i've never heard of now granted i again i'm you can argue i'm given anecdotal evidence at the same time because i'm just one guy but uh i've i don't know that blows my mind why would someone do that it's just I mean, yeah, you could say it's for aesthetics, but I don't know, it's just, would they just buy it just to say they have it, or would they just, I don't know, I mean, what would be the purpose to it, if, if these people have usually, since they're what would be called shelf collectors, they would generally be not someone who would have an attachment to said game or said games and just want to own it for other reasons like just to own it or you know maybe just because it, it's a popular or rare game and it, you know it's considered it's considered a, i won't say a commodity but it's considered a badge of honor to to have this game even if they've never played it or never have the console or never want to play it or have no involvement with the game literally just because it's it is what it is that's crazy to me. Now, I know there's people out there that do all sorts of weird shit, myself included, but I don't know, do, um, is, is that, is that, I'm, I'm gonna have to talk to the guys at, there's, there's a store up in Dublin that I, I go into every time I'm, uh, I'm up there, and they deal in exclusively in pre-owned retro games and, and pre-owned vinyl records, but I'm gonna have to ask them in there if, if they have any, any, you know what would call them instances with customers who specifically mention stuff like that because I don't know it's it's, it's weird because it, it's an interactive thing and I can understand if if you want to buy it to actually play it because it's a game it's designed to be played at least once now like I said earlier in in the video I am partially guilty of it myself. There are a handful of games I do have that I, I can't play for whatever reason. Uh, I, I'll give you a perfect example of them. Some of the older, more coveted, if you will, I'd almost say coveted, some of the, the older Super Nintendo games. I have a bunch of the Japanese ones, mainly because they, for several reasons. Some of them have were not released outside of Japan. Now, I realize because of you know, Super Famicom and the European Super Nintendo, I could actually, and they're and PAL, I could actually put it in and just play it if I really want to, but I don't speak or read Japanese, so 
it's not happening. But those, some of them were Japanese exclusive. Some of them were considerably cheaper than what, say, you know, some people in Europe or America were asking for. So it it, it varies, and like I said, about ninety five percent, if not more, of my game collection is bought with the intention and actual practice of of playing these games at least once usually more than once but it's i don't know that's i'm 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 just repeating myself that it's crazy that it does it does that kind of thing and i'll touch on one of the things that they mention in the video at the same time as well is that does does that kind of thing drive the price up uh, probably a little bit simply because people who will have stuff sitting on their shelf to never do anything with ever removes something from i won't say the economy but it removes it from the the total equation of all this stuff ever happening at least for maybe i don't know 40 or 50 years until maybe they they decide they they grow too old for and just want to flog it all off or maybe they you know they leave it to a family member or they gift it to a family member or something and maybe that other family member or friend or whatever does something with it but that's something that's been out of you know, essentially, if there's one million units of, of a game, and let's just say 100,000 of them are st stacked on shelves, never to be done anything with. Now, when I say that, I mean including playing. They're just literally just there for decorative purposes. But that's that's like 10% of the entire market gone. So 10% of all that is gone. So the rest of the world has to fight among the the rest of the 90%. So because the supply is less, the demand goes up. So the price goes up. So it's 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 understandable that it, it would go that way. I'm just more curious. I know I've said it a hundred times in this video now, but I'm more curious that something like this actually exists. Um, have this, I'll, I'll roll this into the, the actual comment section part now. So let me know in the comment section below what you, what you think of possible... The, the whole shelf collecting quotes mentality versus the actual collector mentality. Now, I don't want to say actual is in a derogatory term, but I'm, I'm saying it in the sense that you buy these old retro games for a reason. Maybe you have an attachment to them or to play them or whatever, but just not just to buy them just to sit on a shelf and look pretty and just to say you have them. So let me know all that as well as your own personal types of retro collections and all and what you what you would take part of i'm very curious if anyone who would consider themselves a shelf collector would actually see this video i'm sure you could le leave me a nice long comment explaining all that in the in the the comment section because i'd love to hear your point of view on it so let me know all that in the comment section below hit the like button hit the subscribe button you can follow me on twitter details in the description below thank you for watching and i'll see you in the rest of the videos in my channel